It's been 50 years since the War of the Wilds, and still nothing grows on the Kindlelands. The exact day the flora of the world stood up and ravaged the cities of the Greenor Peninsula is lost to the ages. After the Great Fire tore its way from west to east, turning the land barren and fallow, the otherworldly patrons, the guides, and the great cities of the Kindlelands worked together in their own way to bring a kind of peace to a war-torn people. It is a gentle, delicate balance, and something or someone threatens it. Welcome to Another Path. My name is Chase, and I'll be your GM. Today, the ages three and Jeremiah take to the stage at Everburn Hall. If you want to support the show, check out our merch store, available at anotherpathpodcast.com, and our Patreon for persistent help to us and rewards to you. And on that note, thank you to our backers, Brayden, Shogun, and Jordan, for their support. So, sit back, relax, and enjoy your trip down Another Path. You have a tail. Um, I, I had possibly the shortest amount of time ever playing a D&D character ever on Wednesday. Nice. I played oh, a character yeah? for approximately 20 minutes. Nice. Um, and then he was flash frozen and exploded. <laughs> oh, like a fish yeah, stick. No, That's how that yeah, goes It was sometimes. great. We were going into a room, and there was like a, like a note on the table, and so I picked it up, and then... Um, someone's like, ooh, let me read, and took it from me, and then I noticed on the back it said, oops. Um, and so I was like, I dive out of the room, which gave me advantage on the deck saving throw, which I passed, but I was down to one hit point at that point, and yeah. only had eight max, and was dealt 11 for cold damage. And yep. so was flash frozen as I was you know, diving through the air, and then when I hit the ground, crash. Played it for 20 minutes. It was very depressing. Adventurer's League? Adventurer's League. Nice. Adventurer's Cut League. Cut throat over there! <laughs> um, I just... I spent a couple evenings ago building my backup character um, for the campaign Ryan's currently running for our home group. Um, should my sweet wizard ever uh, kick the bucket for real this time? We don't talk about that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about my best bear friend dying. Look, I don't want my best bear boy to die either, but... No, no, we don't want another best bear boy to die. That's okay, we have we have several now. There are several, several bear boys. I also am thinking of having a best bear boy in the wings. Because I want to oh, make yeah. a Bjor bard. Ooh, that'd be fun. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, I think a Bjor bard would be a lot of... Be a good time. I got, got, I got the instruments. Oh, see... <clears throat> No, see, we have to keep with the alliteration. If you're a, you're a Bjor bard who plays bagpipes. What about the Bukele? No. The Bukele. No. <laughs> so, um, the village of Everburn, huh? Yeah. Uh. I'm going to wake up in the middle of the night laughing about Bukele. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Jeremiah grins at the dark theater, the purple light glowing off the spectral audience, a low murmur of anticipation spreading in waves over the crowd. The stage is devoid of life, and on life, for that matter. But it is littered by sundry set pieces. You stand there a moment, while the noise never rises. You can tell that they're waiting in anticipation for a show that, at present, isn't coming. I think we need to put on a show, or part of one at least. Some of these set pieces seem to be, I don't know, like of a piece. They belong together. Some of them don't. Uh, there's a light booth back here. That may let us on to something that we should be doing. Uh, and there's probably a place backstage with props or whatnot. If we want to maybe split up, see what we can figure out, maybe we can piece something together out of what we got going on. Yeah, just uh, lead the way. All right. Um, You're the director. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, suppose I am. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um... 
Well, where do y'all feel best checking out? Uh, we got the light room, we got the stage, and like I said, dollars to donuts. There's uh, there's some sort of a storage room back there too. Uh, uh, what do y'all want to check? Uh, Severe, I think you go on stage. That makes sense. Yeah, yes, but uh, I, I, you are the experienced performer of the lot. D- of us. This is true. Thank you. I'll take the back. All right. So I've got the booth. All right. Uh, where do you, who who's gonna want my help? Um, I believe we could use your artistic vision on the stage. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Very well. I'll uh, I'll accompany you, Zafir. All right. Let's get to it. And is it uh, dark back there? Because if so, I'm gonna cast like light on something. It's 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 <laughs> it's pretty dark. You've got the light from the ghosts kind of guiding your way a little bit on stage. You can see pretty well because of the mm-hmm. ghost light. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I um I do oh. I do like my yes. light. It's like one like that dark blue that's always like on like mm-hmm. the floor lighting backstage, like the work lights. Nice, <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> oh, this is such a niche episode. Yeah, it's a blue owl. So, so I'm just. Mm-hmm. Does it sound like a lightsaber? Um, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> so Zephyr um, ushers his way up on stage. Of course, taking the side stairs because he's a professional and knows not to climb up on the mm-hmm. stage. Yes. Um, Mordecai climbs on the stage like an animal. Hey! <laughs> Don't make decisions for me. Mordecai, do you climb on the stage? Yes. <laughs> Like an animal. <laughs> Chew your food, you're an animal. <laughs> and Jackson, it takes you a moment, uh, but eventually you do find a dark ladder that uh, ascends up into the light box there from the main room. Zephyr, we'll go ahead and we'll start with you. Uh, as you ascend the stairs leading along the side of the stage, you are greeted by the cold spectral purple glow of your audience. The stage is filled with set pieces, mostly broken. Uh, Ropes connect all of the larger set pieces onto the ceiling. They're flown in, uh, though many of the ropes have rotted away. Uh, What do you do? Um, I I guess roll, like, investigation. See if I can find the the crispest uh, looking uh, set pieces. I will go ahead and roll a second d20 as your advantage for Jeremiah. Oh, nice. uh, that is a 15 plus 2, 17. Excellent. Jeremiah is stumped. Uh, he's just standing in the corner murmuring. These all look, like from far away they look different, but I'm pretty sure the same person made all of these. Craftsmanship's fantastic, but I'll be fucked if I could tell. And Zephyr, you point to three different ones uh you point to a tree a rock and a low wall these are the only three pieces that don't look like they have crashed in from the ceiling at some point i i ushered jeremiah and and start sort of fetching them and pulling them out and stuff they are in place it seems the tricky part is going to be getting the ones that shouldn't be there out of there that will take us to jackson in the light room Jackson, as you pop the trap door in there, you find that this room lay disused but largely untouched since it was uh, last occupied. Broken and melted candles little the room, mostly melted to nothing, but they are there. Broken glass litters the floor, jingling like coin as you step through. What do you do? Well, the first thing I do is kill the mutated cockroaches. <laughs> Rad roaches, get them! Just yeah. gotta, gotta, gotta. I snow. Um, and then I want to look for any. Um, is there any um, gadgets or implements or anything that look like it's pointed towards the stage? Roll me an investigation check. This will go well. Thirteen. With that, you are able to find uh, a stack of books. They are largely uh, rotted away except for uh, the very ends of each. Um, One is for a play called Broken by the Sea. Mm -hmm. One is for a play called Autumn's Mm -hmm. Fall. 
and one is for a play called Professor Palace. Great. I grab the books. Can I get them without them completely falling apart? Yeah. Okay, I take those and I very carefully kind of wrap them up to take them downstairs. Okay. Are there any... Do I find any playbills or anything like that? Yeah, you find a playbill uh, that has... uh, The words have mostly rotted away, but the uh, color of the paper seems to be golden orange. Great. So I'll take that and the books, and I'll head back downstairs. Excellent. Uh, You climb back down the ladder. And I make sure to close the trapdoor on the way down so no more rad roaches can get upstairs. It's impressive how they got up there in the first place. They're everywhere. Mordecai, you leave Zephyr and Jeremiah on the stage, and uh, you find the storage room that Jeremiah promised you would be there. Uh, So far, this is the most bare room you've been in. You are uh, holding the door wide, trying to get as much light in there as possible, and you see that the shelves and hangers are bare. You're about to leave when you find a trunk, old, heavy, and incredibly locked. What do you do? Hmm. It's like locked, locked. Locked, locked. Hmm. Big old padlock on it, and it's real heavy. I have a morning star. You do. I'ma just smash it open. <laughs> Go ahead and roll uh roll an uh attack and your damage for me. Okay. Attack is not great. <laughs> that's a twelve. It's that's sufficient. It's not moving. Yeah. Damage is seven. Okay. Uh, you take your morning star and you swing it into this thing and it lets out a terrible <laughs> but the lock stays in place surely bent there's definitely only one way to open it now <laughs> go ahead and do it again please well hang on okay hmm. I'm gonna change approach okay I'm gonna put the morning star away I'm gonna cast produce flame in my hand okay I'm gonna dial it into my finger uh-huh. I was like, like doing like the fantasy blowtorch, mm-hmm. and I would torch the lock up. <laughs> okay. Ah, nice. Yeah. Go ahead and roll uh, your damage for that. I think it's 2d8, plus technically a d4, 1, 8, so uh, plus 1, so 10. Okay. And you torch the lock off. Um, you feel a presence kind of at your side suddenly. Mm. It's a strange one that you haven't seen before. As you turn to look at it, your flame goes out and it's gone. Hello? And you hear the lock clang behind you and hit the ground. Ah. Uh. Uh. Too spooky. I'm just gonna make... <laughs> I'm just gonna make a flame in my hand. Okay. As I go to open the chest, or the trunk. You uh, create a flame in your hand. You start to feel that presence again. It is angry. I put the flame out? <laughs> it goes away. Hmm. The place burned down. It probably doesn't like fire. Burn down the theater. Burn no. down the... Th- <laughs> no. We're sufficiently spooked. Mordecai's gonna go to open the chest without any fire in his hands. Okay. You open the trunk <clears throat> and you find that it is filled with uh, old costumes and props. Hmm. Uh, you find a trick sword, a plain white tabard, a telescope with a knife on top. What? <laughs> half of a mask, a springy twig, a pillow, a crown, a fine dress, and a sitar. All right. Important. I'm sorry. Important question, DM. That telescope with the knife, is the knife actually attached to the telescope? Oh, yes, it is. Okay, cool. So it's like a switchblade telescope. Yes. It's a telescope with a bayonet. (laughs) Yes. Perfect. Okay. I will... I will scoop all of this up in my gigantic arms, and I will return it to the stage. Uh, That takes us back to the stage, where the inappropriate pieces need to be moved out of the way. And I don't know if I've ever gotten to say this before, but I'm really happy that I get to. Zephyr, I would like you to roll me a strength check. (laughs) Want to be athletics? Because I'm proficient in athletics. 
I'll give it to you. Zephyr was in the was known for the clean and jerk. Uh, Back on no, the that's wall. a thirteen plus four, <laughs> seventeen. Okay. Uh, you are able to get most of the pieces moved out of the way. Uh, Jeremiah helps with some of the smaller ground pieces, the stuff that uh, kind of splinter to the to the floor. Uh, but clearing uh, everything else out of the way, you do see that this does create a fairly nice pastoral scene. Oh, nice, nice. Jackson comes down the aisle and he lays the plays out at the foot of the stage. Hey guys, I found some remnants of books it looks like and uh one of the paper things that tells you what the place called that what whatever that i don't know and i put that down so we've got uh program program yes that's it i think that sounds right i don't know well the final flight doesn't usually have programs you know because they're on tour yeah we wouldn't have anywhere to sleep if we didn't have if we uh carried around a printing press with us <laughs> that'd be unfeasible but I found, um, so look, this was called Autumn's Fall. This one's something about water. And uh, I can't make out the third one. But the program, that's what we're calling it, a program? That's, that's yeah. right. It's called a program, yes. The program's got some uh, orangey colors to it. So I make an intelligence check. I'm pretty sure that's the water one. <laughs> So Jeremiah comes up and reads the programs uh, kind of upside down from you. Well, uh, Broken by the Seas of Fear, you know that. Y'all should know that one. That's one of ours that we do. It's about a, a bitter rivalry of croquet and love, and it comes to a head at the city of Portswall. Uh, Autumn's Fall, that's uh, the sonnet that we read out there that, the, that was on the bar. That's from this right oh. here. It's the last bit from that. Uh, the Queen of Autumn is left by her husband, uh, King Oberon, uh, over her, after her love of humanity causes a rift between the pair. Uh, that last one there, that's uh, Professor Pallas. Uh, it's uh, about a scientist who sells his soul to a man at a crossroads, and hilarity ensues. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that one. That one sounds like fun. I've been thinking about adding it to the to the docket for a little while. It's a little grim. Not a lot of people are super into it right now, but uh, I don't know. I think I, I got a darker sense of humor, so I think it's funny. <laughs> so, um, what show are we putting on? Well, uh, what'd you find there? Um, I just kind of extend my arms. There's some clothes. Hmm. There's a weird telescope knife. Mm -hmm. There's a, uh, a twig, a springy twig. Hmm. A lot of weird shit. I pick he... up the sitar and start strumming it. <laughs> hey, Zach. Oh, no. Zach, I'd like you to make me a wisdom saving Oh, character. God. What have oh, I done? No. 15 plus 6. His, that is 21. Evil eyes on. Okay, you do not automatically attune to the sitar, but you do feel... It has some sort of a grasp that reaches out for you. It doesn't feel malevolent, but it feels like something. <laughs> but I just drop it. <laughs> oh, I, I liked that instrument. Ah, there I was, was a ghost was... in the sitar. <laughs> <laughs> that you there's a wait, what and Tom, there's a do not play that. <laughs> I just was not Wait. expecting it. And it scared me a little. <laughs> but we're okay now. Okay, are we... We, You sure? We're good? We're good? I think so. And Jack, Jackson's almost got his weapon drawn. And is slightly uh, tensed up. We're mm -hmm. fine. It's just don't don't play it. And it, it, everything oh should be alright. <laughs> oh, alright. If you're... Okay. Okay. Haunted strings. Jeremiah starts looking through the props that you brought here, and he's, you know, throwing some stuff out of the way. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, the twig. Wait a minute, can I see that twig? Sure. And he takes it, and he bends it, and it snaps back into position. Like, well. That's a, that's a good trick. Boom, boop, bend, snap. Huh. Maybe. It's on your mind. Hey, Zephyr, 
Yes. How are you with a cold read? I am amazing. <laughs> Excellent. I think, and I'm not positive, but I think we just gotta, we're gonna have to do, uh, with everything we got here, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be Autumn's Fall. All right. All righty. And uh, with that in mind, I'm the director, and you're my actor. You're the one I got here. Ooh, so, what do I do? Well, let me see here. You comfortable wearing a dress? You mm. would be such a pretty person in dress. Yeah, okay. Cool. And he throws the fine dress that you found in there at you. All right, you're going to be uh, oh, the queen of gonna, autumn. This isn't going to fit. <laughs> Not with that attitude. I believe in you. You never know unless you try. I'm going to have to tear the sleeves off. All right, well, don't do not do that. Don't do that. It, here, let me. And he, <laughs> like, he pulls out a very small knife and makes, like, a handful of, like, very tiny incisions into the dress so it's a little bit more breathable. Mm. It's got some more give. Exactly. I'm, I'm putting it on over my con- my existing guard. Oh, yeah, g- clearly. <laughs> no, this is a terrible look. Yeah. At Zephyr, he throws the tabard and uh, the springy twig. I put both of those things on my body. All right. Uh, Jackson? Yeah? Did you uh, happen to see a spotlight up there? It looked like everything had been busted up real good. Uh, damn. All right. Um. What's a spotlight? It looks like a big old can. No. With a candle in it. <laughs> um, I mean, there were pieces. I could probably fix it. Yeah. All right. I'll, 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 I'll take you at your word there, McSlash. Um, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, oh, shit. <laughs> I'm going to walk these two through their scene. Uh, Jackson, if you can go ahead and get that taken care of. What's it supposed to do? It's supposed to, uh, well, there's a glass on one end and there's a bunch of mirrors on the inside and there's a candle like right inside there as well. You're supposed to be able to light the candle and all the mirrors will reflect the light onto the stage. Can you draw me a picture? Uh, yeah. And he does. Okay, and great. It's it's very rudim no, not even rudimentary. It's a little crude, but it gets the point across. It's enough so that I have an idea of what I'm trying yeah. to accomplish. Absolutely. Okay. I go back upstairs, throw open the trap door. Mm-hmm. Any any cockroaches? Nope. Good. Um uh, and I uh start looking to get the pieces together and You didn't ask about death claws. Uh <laughs> Yao Guai. Because they'd be out in the waste. We know this. That's true. There's not enough room in here. Yeah, no, this is yeah, where you no. hide with Boone, and then you swe- uh, sleep while he fast travels so he doesn't get killed by the uh, death claw outside. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so I go back, I go upstairs, and I uh, start putting the pieces together, and I kind of pile them all up, and then I concentrate, mm-hmm. and my. Uh, tattoo glows briefly and i cast mending Mm -hmm. repeatedly repeatedly spending as much time as needed it takes you a solid like 10 minutes of like just constantly bursting out mending because mending takes a second to do it's rough and it is tedious uh but you kind of dial yourself back and get into the zone and eventually you have enough pieces of this together that you think you can get it working During this time, Jeremiah is spending with the two of you, uh, kind of getting your, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Getting uh, your motivations in line. Our Uh, subtext. Exactly. Our objectives. He spends his time going over the motivations with you all. uh, And it's a pretty sad story. The basic synopsis of the show is that it opens up in the heat of a battle and the Queen of Autumn is trying to stop uh, the humans that uh, she has dominion over from fighting. She succeeds, but at great personal cost. Her husband, King Oberon of Summer, begs her to stop. She just flatly refuses. She loves these humans too much. Um, There is a little bit of light comedy in the center when King Oberon decides to pretend to be human very briefly. 
but the artifice quickly falls away. The show ends with Oberon leaving this world. The final monologue of the show is from Oberon's perspective. And Zach, Rob, if you would like to I'm already on my know, way. read over your lines for a moment, because Wait, you are what? going to be reading this. What did you do, Chase? I wrote that sonnet. Uh, that was an original. Ah, uh, bless you. What, you think I'm going to write a sonnet and only put it in one episode? <laughs> I'm going to get some work out of this thing. I'm so proud of you. You're a really good DM. Thank you. Would you like me to continue to sing your praises while Zach finds his lines? Uh, you know, he, he's got I, it. No, he's I'm just reading through. it, yeah. Okay. Oh, you're taking taking the, the five minutes out? Yeah, the yeah, to come exactly. In for the director? Exactly. Um, As we know, this is canon. This is not Saphir's first audition. That's it's true. true. No, and look, the quality of your performance is going to determine what the role in DC are going to be. Oh, so, oh, you know. That's rude. Yeah. So not only do I have to do this well, but I have to do this well in my ridiculous accent. So You're very good ridiculous accent. You could use disguise self. I'm not stopping you. <laughs> um, in this point of the play, is mm -hmm. is Oberon still pretending to to be human, or has he shed oh, that no, no. facade? That, that, that's fallen away. This is this is the last monologue. He is about to to take flight into the great wherever. Probably wherever these people mm. are supposed to be. And he points out to the audience. What do, uh, do you want me to be in my true form? Or do you wish me to be uh, uh, someone more um, uh, ethereal? I'll let the actor make the choice on that. Mm. You do you, Zephyr. But whatever choice you make, make it a strong one. <laughs> a light hits you. Is this how this works? I think I fixed it. Hot yeah. damn! I Turn think I can... <laughs> oh, wait. Here, hold on one second. And I pick up a different piece of glass and I hold it in front and Zephyr turns green. <laughs> hey, is there, a, is there a piece of metal up there that looks like leaves? Uh, hold on. It'll have cutouts. It'll be cut out like leaves. Oh, okay. How? Here you go. And I wait. Hold on. Um, hmm. Hold on. Hey, uh, uh, Gary, I gotta hold these in front of this. Can you kind of man the spotlight or drag in the spotlight? Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Just hit the fear. Okay. All the and he like Gary. leans back on it, and the spotlight goes right up into your eyes, Zephyr. Uh Everybody else sees the Batman logo appear over Zephyr. <laughs> Here, how's that? Uh, you know, I think we'll just go with the lights on this one, but thank you. Oh, oh, okay. Because every theater has a Batman gobo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Oh, shit. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> All right. Places. 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 Zephyr uh, transforms uh, well not transforms but uses disguise self um, he looks kind of like an elf but not quite elf like something more you know like there's a faint glow about him not like he's like illuminating but like like a sort of like glitter or glisten that sort of so he, like fairy dust so, sort of sprinkling so you're a sweaty elf no I'm not a sweaty elf he's a pregnant elf <laughs> No, not like not like a pregnant glow, but like an ethereal sort of like you know like like it just you had you just had really good sex glow. We're, I think we're getting closer. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like if I just got you know finished having like an after sex glow, but like with like Tinkerbell. So like. <laughs> Okay, there, there, so, so there's some residual There's glitter. some sort of sparkliness sort of coming off yeah. of me. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable with the energy we've created in the studio. I'm not. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I'm the uncomfortable so, one who has to, you know, try to act so really well an, for this, so. You're an elf who is uh, glowing, uh, basking in the after sex glow, with, with, who's also covered in body glitter. Yes. Okay. Same. Oh, well, was, well, I thought you were going to set the stage for us, let us know oh, what, yes, what's uh, happening. Okay. All right. Um, 
I mean, I kind of already did. I told you. Okay. But I like you went through it down here, didn't it? Now I'm in my ethereal, looking back in my accent. But we are we. You, oh, like, and you should clear uh, the Mordecai, stage, you're, probably. you're playing the Queen of Autumn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did forget this part. No, I kind of figured that. So I need you to stand over here and right look here. sad and wistful right. and take Whist- me on a journey with your face. Ooh. Ooh. Maybe ah. less of a journey and more of a short walk. Hmm. There we go. There we go. Perfect. All right. Oberon. You are leaving your wife maybe forever. The light pops on. I, I I grasp Mordecai's hands and hold them close. And, and I open my, my weird body glitter ridden mouth <laughs> and speak thusly. And so I must leave you here, my love. As I wander the ever-changing seas to uh, the world ascends and descends from above, I wish you to come, to dance among the stars, to leave this world of flesh to man and beast, to become one with all and see past scars. I have been forsaken and miss my home and find myself without life's own partner. But I must return to the death's own gloam. We have been blessed by mother and father to live anywhere we could want or need our home is beyond the stars and father my love is honest and true my light and then I kiss Mordecai and then I pull away well the the, the second lasts at least you know it lasts around three seconds it's tender but not too tender not too sexual it's just right and then as I pull away, I, I, I'm i still very close to Mordecai's face. To find me again, simply take life's flight. And the light fades off of you. Jackson? Good job, Gary. That was a good... I would like you to make me a wisdom saving throw at disadvantage. <sighs> What's funny about that is that you don't, you didn't like taste my weird ethereal elf lips. You, you felt full dragonborn snout. <laughs> <laughs> It was super weird. (laughs) Nine. Jackson, you're crying. You're, like, you didn't realize it until you turned to face Gary, but your eyes are just filled with tears. And you go to wipe them away, and you realize they're not your tears. You realize that it's not your emotions welling up in you. It's Gaia's. Oh. Oh. Our girl. You feel your hand kind of come out and you see the tears, but you're not super in control of your hand right now. And you kind of wipe them off and you hear in the back of your head, Sorry, I... I don't know why that got me so much. Um... I don't... I don't know. I guess your friend's performance must have been quite good. Don't tell him that. He's got a big enough head. Fair enough. (laughs) I would like Mordecai and Zephyr to both roll me a performance check. I'm going to give myself self-imposed disadvantage for being blindsided by a Zephyr. That's a 28 Okay. Thank. You. Here comes me with my negative one performance at disadvantage. I've got a plus nine, six, mm-hmm. five. <laughs> so <Excellent>. a four. <laughs> However, your combined is a thirty-two, which is sufficient. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> when we talk about one actor carrying a scene. Oh, Mordecai <laughs> definitely broke character, but I think Zephyr was was in it enough. For me to not draw focus. Mm -hmm. As the light fades off of the stage and as Jackson is wiping the tears away, the crowd stands in ovation and they're clapping and cheering. Zephyr, you have never had an audience like this before. They are loud and happy and most importantly, they are alive. The disguised self drops in like a a fantastic, like, 
flourish of light, and then Zephyr mm-hmm. staying there, just like, ah, thank you! It takes, like, a very, very extravagant bow. And Mordecai gestures to Zephyr. <laughs> and uh, even Jeremiah is standing up front, just clapping and shaking his head, like, yes! This is what I need! I don't know why I went into your voice there, but here it was. <laughs> well, Joe's got a similar voice. Fair enough. Yas, yeah. yas, queen, yas. Yas, queen, yas. <laughs> yas. Oh my god. Got weird. <laughs> yeah. As they start to file out into the aisle, they disappear. The second their foot hits that center aisle, they start to vanish and leave. I would like everybody to make me a perception check. Not one. Eleven. Six. Zephyr, as a, a, you know, you are doing your exuberant bows. You go and you kind of turn your head to the side and you see a specter you hadn't seen before. Uh, you see this spirit move from the backstage area. He moves with impassioned determination to the center of the wall at the back of the theater. He slips his hands in between a crack that you didn't see before and moves as if he's flinging open the wall as easily as if he were moving a curtain. He turns back to you, and he looks you in the eye with a hurt intensity. And in that moment, you feel like you're looking into the eyes of Jeremiah. And to you alone, he says, Help us. Please. I don't want to burn another night. And with that, he is gone. I'm still wiping uh, dragon saliva off my lips. It was not that wet, okay? It was tender and loving. (laughs) You go to that back wall right where he was, and sure enough, there is a crack there in the wall. But the stone didn't actually move when this guy threw the wall apart. Okay. Oh, sorry. But you do see the crack there that he... All right. So if it has, like, I try to move it? Nothing. It... Stone. Whoa. Um, there was a ghost that went in here... But in like pulled it open, but um, I cannot pull it are open. We, are we done? Why are did you done? kiss can me? Can I come? Can I come down now? Ugh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're good. You're good. Do we Why need it? Taste- Why okay. did you taste like cinnamon? Ugh. You did good there. I like that uh, pull away at the end. Good job, Gary. Ugh. Yeah, thanks, boss. I uh, always thought I had an artistic side. Oh God. I gave him a piece of bacon. Bacon. <laughs> I I douse the light because safety first. Absolutely. Always remember to unplug your spotlights, kids. Mordecai, there's a term called raising the stakes. And I believe that Kiss did that. We were in love. I was leaving you, better you not have raised your stakes. for the last time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank Fine. You. Uh, Keep uh, your mind in the gutter. You cannot appreciate my art. Yeah, pretty much. I come back down to the stage. That was um something. It was beautiful. Yeah. You kissed me. Yes, I ki- Why? Yes, I did. I'm sorry. You know, some of us are a little more open-minded, perhaps. Just ask next time, like. You surprised me. I didn't know I was going to do it until the moment came. Fine. No, I was no, in no, it. No. I believed I loved okay, you. Okay. Okay. Whatever. Damn. You know, Sophia, I think it's... Uh, I, I was obviously moving because well, you you made a patron tra- Thank cry. Thank you. So oh, I did? Oh. There. Yes. God, yes. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know how when you... Uh, uh, have a sparring match, or oh, maybe you don't. You know when you watch a sparring match. I've if it's been like in a, a sparring match before. Okay, but you know how beforehand you go over the rules of it with your partner. I think Mordecai just wanted you to have gone over the rules. I first. didn't know that it was a rule. It, so I understand that. Yeah, we haven't the, done any romantic shows in a rip. Yeah. Uh, I used to have a, a, a standard stage partner she and i would like to take those roles on but we haven't had somebody with the good chemistry for it in a minute that would be like if i was in a sparring match and then kicked you in the nuts and then went oh by the way there's a no nut kicking policy just so you're aware (laughs) 
I'm just saying I would have liked a heads up. I first. didn't have that a heads up me. first. You think I enjoyed kissing you? No, it was for the performance. You are not as good wow. looking as you think you now are. Now I'm offended, and I walk away. Yeah, that's a little rude. <laughs> you should apologize. He's, I, Mordecai struts away. I bore my. He sashays soul. away. Still in the dress. Do, oh, absolutely. Do you shake your ass just a little bit, just so I know what I'm missing. Mm, I don't think Mordecai has that level of uh, a panache yet. Yeah. yeah. Also, not much of a butt. Also, great yeah. gams though. It's great all up top. Gams. Yeah. Mm. Beautiful. So this wall. So yeah. there's a wall. <laughs> Mordecai, I know you're angry with me, but can you turn into something small and, like, crawl through there? Or could, like, Gary do that? I mean, yeah, probably. I've never turned into something small before. But I guess it's the first time for everything. Anything? Um, everything. One of the two. Oh. What's the smallest thing I can turn into? Jeremiah leans in real close. It's like, I... I don't know. This seems pretty tight. Like, I don't think somebody... I don't think a mouse would be able to get through even. Well, I, I, I just... Oh, I saw the ghost throw it aside like it was nothing. And then he disappeared. Did you notice anything about the ghost? He looked hurt, and then he said uh, whatever whatever you said to me earlier. Fair enough. Uh, Something about don't let us burn another night or something like that. Burn? Again? Like, this is happen. Like, like, this is continuing to happen well i mean they they seem to be you know here still so perchance something happened that night that locked them in place and every evening they relive it oh this is a horror movie ah yeah jay i'm not the smartest guy i'm the sharpest uh pick in the cave but like the place is called Everburn hall and now it is ever burning. Oh, God. The, oh, look. It was a bad omen. It was supposed to be because of the candle out there. Because it was always supposed to be burning as long as the master of the house was here. The fact that uh, this centuries-old fort eventually fell to the massive fire that swept across this great nation isn't unfortunate, but real, um, uh, a bit of a circumstance. Talk about that <laughs> irony, am I right? I know, right? There we are. Well, perchance, the, the reputation and spirit of this place uh, lived on and, and took the fire as, uh, uh, you know, it, it sort of brought it. I don't know what I'm talking about. Someone else go. <laughs> I take out my toy crossbow and I shoot it at the wall. The cork bounces <laughs> off wildly. Hits Jeremiah in the face. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> God! <sighs> Honestly, I was just trying to bri- I was just trying to get Sophia No, it's... Up. <laughs> at this point, it's just not my night, man. It's fine. Whatever. I mean, do you want me to try to smash the wall down or something? No, probably not. Magic eyes. Okay. <laughs> Magic eyes. Uh, magic eyes. That is, a, that is a good declaration. What are you trying uh, to do? With magic eyes, you are able to see that the crack in the wall uh, is glowing brightly with a transmutation spell. You also see the sitar glowing in the corner, menacing you. <laughs> uh, a, 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 a ghostly pair of eyes there. appear with a large grin. <laughs> no. Um, no, it actually seems benign. Oh. Whatever that is, it seems like it is, it would be more of an in, both a convenience and an inconvenience as opposed to something terrible and malicious. Yeah, I'm just going to look. I look back at the crack. This is all magic, very very transmute. Mm-hmm. Um, like this was once something else, and someone turned it into stone. Possibly, or. Uh, perhaps something caused you know, something magical caused this sort of rift that goes up the wall and that Let may me... be what he what he's doing all this I don't know I pfft. let me let me try something fuck it I'm mm-hmm. drunk um GM might pull in a little bit of bullshit okay my one like druidy cantrip aside from produce flame is uh-huh. mold earth okay which includes stone. Yeah. 
I'd like to place my hand on the stone wall and just sort of like, I don't know, try to like earth sense it a little bit just to see, like, get a sense of what this is and if I can, if I can affect it in any way. Uh, yeah, you put your hand right, uh, a little bit to the side of the, uh, of the crack that Zephyr was talking about and, uh, you're able to, yeah, you feel like you could, you could probably push this out of the way. Okay. Because I can, yeah, I can excavate, I can, uh, it says, like, I can make dirt or stone in a small area difficult terrain, so I okay. imagine I can, like, kind of crumble it and... Yeah, it would, it would take a couple of minutes, but you'd be able to make, like, a weird clay hole here. Yeah, okay. Yep. Then I will, I will, with one hand on the wall, and I'll fiddle the chunk of stone on my druid necklace. Nice. Um, just start to try and shift and and carve us a a an ingress okay it takes you seven minutes uh to actually like carve this out and it it, you know it takes that time because you do have to kind of dig away you know huge chunks of it because as soon as you get it soft you you know throw it onto the ground and it quickly solidifies behind you um but after a few minutes you feel a gust of hot and humid air hit you as uh, you see a beautiful if very ancient and very condensated uh spiral staircase going both up and down oh god uh, jeremiah did hey. you know this was y'all here? i found a thing hey good work there mordecai hey, what nice. is uh does it look like it's part of the architecture of the place or does it look like a ghost thing it no. looks solid yeah it, it it looks like it was part of the thing jeremiah staring at it's like you know i thought there'd be a place for uh for the family to stay here in the main hall i guess this is it well okay let us go have a look okay uh, Zephyr, as you take a step closer, uh, you hear a familiar voice pop up in the back of your head. Yay, Carrie! <gasps> Carrie! Hey there, the- good buddy! I just wanted to let you know that there is some powerful magic coming from downstairs. Just be careful. Can, could, can you tell me what kind? Fey, druid, plant bullshit! Oh. Oh, no. Thank you for joining us here on Another Path. You can find our website and merch store at anotherpathpodcast.com, on Twitter at anotherpathpod, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash anotherpathpodcast. You can support our efforts by donating at patreon.com slash, you guessed it, another path. And on that note, a special thanks to our donor, Nathan N., or by giving us a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or on whatever podcatcher will let you. You can also find me on Twitter at TQ Loudly, Ryan at Ryan underscore Albrecht, Griffin at Griffcold, and Zach at that guy, Zach Rob. We'll be back in two weeks with a new episode. And until then, remember, there's always a choice. <laughs>